help with something? From where you're seated, could you take a look around and see who else is with you in the audience? See if you can find anyone who looks like you. That could be on the basis of race, gender, age. And see if you can also find anyone who looks like me. All right, thank you guys, and thank you, Matt, on lights. So this is an activity I do whenever I attend events in Napa Valley. Much like here, I see a lot of white folks. There's more young people here than I thought there would be, but usually the crowd is middle-aged, occasionally elderly. I don't see a lot of black and brown folks or encounter people with disabilities. I am often the only person who is either young, a woman, of color, and most of the time, all three of those things. And I don't think it's because I am the only young woman of color in Napa Valley. But if I don't see myself represented when I move through spaces here, who else is like me and denied seeing themselves? This exclusion actually extends beyond our physical spaces and into hashtag our Napa, our advertising campaigns, and even our cultural icons. I'm here today because I'm tired of being the only person like me in the room, or the token. I'm tired of being in spaces that are mostly, if not all, white, and people thinking that is normal and OK when we all know it is not just white people who live, work, or visit here. I go into new places looking for connections and friends, but instead I'm marked an outsider when I have to answer, what are you? Or, where are you from? No, really, where are you from? And to add insult to injury, I'm also invisible to these same people. I live in Napa, but when people think of Napa, beauty, womanhood, women of my racial background, you don't think of me. I don't exist in your imagination, let alone Google Images. And when we are content to let people stay outside our understanding of community like that, one possible outcome is racism and xenophobia. This is a Facebook post that has since been deleted, but was screen capped because the internet never forgets. In it, a person sees a bus full of Latinos arrive in Napa Valley, assumes they must be illegal immigrants, and then tags government officials looking for answers. The posts and comments as a whole are full of gems such as these. This first comment, which is ironic because historically, white people have invaded everyone else's lands globally. And this land run right now, it was never white folks' to begin with. It was Mexico's, and before that, it was the Wapo and the Pomos, the indigenous peoples to this land who are still here and alive. The second comment is a reiteration of racist propaganda that's been used against groups such as the Chinese and the Japanese. It conflates all people of color as perpetually foreign enemies that the true Americans need to fight against. But what really gets me are these two comments. Why is it so baffling a bus full of Latinos would be here? People still take the bus, and according to the 2014 census data, Latinos and Hispanics make up about one-third of Napa County's population. And when we consider undocumented peoples, that's probably a low estimate, and it's not just Latinos who are here undocumented. And I also think it's openly acknowledged in Napa Valley that Latinos are the backbone of our hospitality and wine industry, yet despite their prevalence and importance in our community, we still have comments like this. That's because racism isn't just something that happens in cities like Ferguson and Flint or wherever Donald Trump is holding his rallies. It's here in Napa Valley in exchanges like this and in the wine train. And is that the kind of community we want to create? Because this isn't how I want people to think about Napa, this place I call home now. But this is just one possible outcome of just one group being excluded from our understanding of community. These next few images are meant to be fuel for your imagination about what a more complete Napa can look like when we more accurately represent the people who are here. Rather than me being an outsider here, people know I exist and imagine me as part of their communities. I came to Napa for work, but I stayed for spaces like these. This particular image is from a Facebook and Instagram group called Napatitlan, dedicated to showing Napa Valley from a Latino perspective. I think we can all benefit from seeing the world through someone else's eyes, if not seeing our own experiences finally reflected back to us. This is Kapuli Nanawatsin at Dia de la Familia, and I think what Kapuli Nanawatsin does is really vital, which is work both by 
and for the community. This is from Napa's LGBTQ Connections Youth Group at the Youth Empowerment Summit via the Gay Street Alliance Network. I think it is so amazing we have a space our young people can organize and lead their own futures from. And they know so much already, like what demisexuality is at 13. They were gracious enough to invite me to some of their winter events, so I got to see for myself what wonderful spaces they're creating, where people can openly be themselves, both in their queer sexualities and their gender queerness, meaning I was in a room with more than two genders. This is from Napa's Hella Open Mic, and over the past two years I've attended, I've seen all sorts of local talent ranging from DJs, ukulele players, old men hooked up to oxygen tanks while strumming banjo, and young people speaking truth about sexual assault. And I've seen the connection made between people in the audience and on stage when we're honest with one another. So let me be honest with you. These physical spaces are gateways to emotional spaces. When we do right by our community, we can not only be seen, we can be understood, we can connect with one another, and we can even be healed. And that is invaluable in a world that would see some of us murdered just for being ourselves. These are by no means comprehensive examples. I haven't included our elderly, the Suskal Intertribal Council, Napa Valley Ethnic Studies, but these are just some examples of what a more complete Napa can look like when we more accurately represent the people who are here. And I hope you'll be inspired to create more spaces like them. The first step towards that is the activity we did in the beginning and realizing what kind of spaces you are in. So whether you are at wine tastings, festivals, or restaurants, take a look around you and see who else is in the room with you and who is not. What you do next, I don't know. I, I don't have all the answers. Uh, we're coming from different places, and I can't tell you how to give up the power and attention that comes with overrepresentation because I've never had either. I can't give you every nonprofit group to donate your money to, every performance group to support, because I can't speak for all people of color, let alone all people whose voices have been pushed to the sides. There is no one-size-fits-all, 10-point plan I can give you, because all of our needs are different. Learning to work with a group of black trans women is different from learning to work with a group of white cis women. And I think, to me at least, it's by far more important you have a way of looking at the world, an approach, rather than a list of things you'll forget about once you complete. So here are the suggestions I can give you. One, as my rowing coach Sarah Nevin once told me, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Instead of giving in to your first instinct of self-defensiveness, sit with your discomfort and figure out why you're feeling that way. Two, consider the how and why of your spaces. How or why did people show up, and how or why did people not show up? Three, talk to people you don't normally talk to. And sometimes that means sitting in silence as we listen to their stories and reflecting before we speak back to them. Next, invite new people into your pre-existing spaces, but also go into new spaces that might make you feel uncomfortable, but not unsafe in, such as being the only English speaker in the room. Lastly, Teach yourself, teach others, learn together, but remember no one is obligated to teach you anything, not even me. When you're ready, come find me. I'll be here where I am right now, on this land, dreaming of a Napa Valley where all sorts of normal, valuable, but often marginalized people can not only exist, but grow and thrive. And that, to me, is community. Won't you dream of me and with me?